Hi, we'll begin our process of describing motion with defining distance and displacement. What are we learning? We're learning about scalars and factors and distance and displacement. Our essential questions, what is the difference between a scalar and a vector quantity? What are our first scalar and vector quantities that we'll use to describe motion? A quantity is something that we measure. There are two types of quantities, scalars and vector quantities. A scalar quantity only tells us about the magnitude or how much. Uh, it doesn't tell us anything about the direction. Some examples are, say, mass and temperature. Those two, talking about direction doesn't really make any sense. We'll talk about distance in just a moment. That's one of our first descriptors of a motion. Now, a vector quantity, on the other hand, has both magnitude and direction. And the direction, when we're talking about direction, we're going to talk about in the positive or negative direction. We're living in a one-dimensional world here at first. We're just going to be going in one dimension. Often, we'll represent a vector with an arrow. The length of the arrow will be scaled to the magnitude of, and the direction of the arrow will tell us about the direction of the quantity. We'll mostly describe direction, like I said, as positive or negative. Our first example of a vector quantity is displacement. A little bit later, we'll look at a few different types of vector quantities, such as velocity, acceleration, force, and momentum. Now we're ready to compare distance and displacement. So distance is going to be defined as the amount traveled along a path. We'll use a lowercase d for the variable and the international system uh, unit is going to be the meter. If we move from point P to point Q and we go along the blue path, the length of that blue path is the distance. Now we can measure, say, the number of steps we took and convert that into meters. We can use a trundle wheel or a measuring wheel for that. However we measure it, this measurement will be our distance. So displacement is similar but different in very important ways. Displacement is first a vector quantity and has magnitude and direction information. The variable or symbol we use is the Greek letter delta and x. So displacement gets two letters. Displacement is defined as the change in position. Since it's a vector quantity, we can use an arrow to represent it. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude. In our, in our example, we are showing the displacement between point P and point Q. Sometimes the magnitude and the displacement are the same. If we travel in a straight line from point P to point Q, the magnitude of the displacement and the direction would be the same. And notice that the unit is the same for uh, displacement also. Now let's look at an example of displacement. When an object moves, its position changes from one place in space and time to another. When we describe motion, it is helpful to use a coordinate system and a specified origin. A frame of reference is a choice of coordinate axis that defines a starting point for measuring any quantity. It is a an essential first step for solving virtually any problem in mechanics. So a frame of reference here is going to be this coordinate system. It gives us a starting point for measurements. So we're going to use this uh, coordinate system as though we've drawn this onto a road where our car is moving. We'll mostly use the ground below us, the Earth, as a frame of reference when describing motion. We could choose 
any frame of reference that we want it to. For example, uh, the frame of reference from our star, the sun, us sitting on a chair or just sitting here, we're moving on our planet at about 67,000 miles per hour, per hour around the solar system. Our solar system itself is moving at 448,000 miles per hour around our galaxy, the Milky Way. And our galaxy is moving relative to the cosmic background radi radiation left over from the Big Bang at about 1.3 million miles per hour. So you see, for right now, we'll just stick to motion relative to the ground. So we have this car, and it's going to move back and forth uh, along a straight line, taken be the x-axis. Because right now, we're interested only in the car's translational motion, which is back and forth, and not its rotational motion, not yet. We can model this as just a point. So here's our first equation for displacement. We're going to walk through what each of these symbol means or each of these variables means. So first off, we have this delta. This delta we can read as change in. It's the final minus initial whatever is after that. And in this case, what's after that is the x. The x is position. So we put both of those together, we get delta x, that is our displacement, is the change in position. And that's the definition of displacement. Next, we have two more x's. Now, since we have two different x's or two different positions is what x uh, gives us, we use subscripts to describe them. The first one, x sub i, is going to be the initial position or the beginning position. x sub f is going to be the final position. So that describes this equation. The change in position is the final position minus the initial position. So let's do an example where we put some real quantities in this equation to get a feel for what it means. So um, the beginning position here for our car is 30. Our final is 52. When we're working these out, when we're, whenever we're working with an equation, we're actually trying to solve something, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to write down the equation for yourself. All right. The next thing to do is to do what we call the plug and chug, which we're just going to plug in our quantities here. And they're going to go into our equation. So notice how we've kept the equation nicely in line here. So we can easily see what we plugged in. So here's our uh, final position, our initial position. This will be very important because often what will happen is that we'll make mistakes and they'll be super easy to find your mistakes this way. So we go 52 minus 30, and we get 22 meters. Notice that this is positive. It is going in the positive direction. Here's our vector. And that's a feel of how we use displacement. All right, let's summarize what we've learned so far. First, distance is how far an object has traveled. We'll measure along the path that we went and that will be our distance. We'll use a small d as its variable or symbol. We'll use meters to measure distance. This is a scalar quantity. We, it doesn't give us anything about direction. Now displacement is 
the change in position, and that's going to be the final minus the initial position. We're also using meters, and it's going to be a vector quantity. It's going to be either positive or negative. In our example here, we went from P to Q, if we call to the right, positive. This is a positive displacement. All right, thanks for listening. Now complete your Cornell notes. Rewind and review as necessary.